Live from Asheville, the jewel of Western North Carolina, it's the Travis Book Happy Hour. Tonight, special guest John Stickley and your host, Travis Book. Thank you so much for being here tonight. My name is Travis Book. Good evening. Welcome to the Travis Book Happy Hour. I'm super psyched tonight. We're going to try to keep things light and breezy. Um, Wait, this is too loud. Hang on. At least we know it's working. We got John Stickley in the house. We're going to have a good time tonight. <laughs> I can say a lot of things about John Stickley and his music. And I might, given enough time, but but the one thing I the one thing I was thinking about a lot before this show was just how much how how you know when you watch John Stickley play the the, the word that always comes to mind is joy. That is a man who thoroughly enjoys playing the guitar, and it sounds always sounds like there's joy coming straight out of his instrument. So I'm gonna we're gonna play some music today. We're gonna shoot the shit about where we've come from. We've got a lot of history together, Stickley and I. Um, and, and, you know, th try, trying to keep things light tonight, a, a, a quote from Carlos Santana, if you carry joy in your heart, you can heal any moment. Isn't that nice? Thanks, Carlos. Why we worry, tell me, why we cry and tell me. Can we live together without pain? Burdens at our doorstep, burdens in our heart. It's time to let them travel, lay them down. From the tallest mountain down in the lowest valley, we're all asking and we want to know why we're climbing. Tell me why we're falling. Tell me where we're going, yeah, we want to know, right? Sunrise, rise, sun, rise, so. coming and it is not promised but it's all we know can we quantify it can we try and name it try to fight it while we hold it close right Thank you, Rise Sun. That's a song that was on the latest String Dusters record. It doesn't sound like that on there, but. Um, so, I want to talk about some things. You know, uh, I don't even really know where to start. I've got this playlist I made on, uh, on Spotify, and it's public. You can check it out. It's called uh, Matters on Matters of Being. And it's tunes that point, it's sort of like my stand in for like spiritual music. It's my way to go to church. It's, it's, it's songs that, while I've listened to them, it occurs to me that on some deeper level, some of them work more sort of uh, overtly than others. They point at, they're like fingers pointing at the moon, to use the, the Buddhist saying. They are, they are songs that sort of address these sort of larger existential questions about, about how to be. And to me, that ultimately is sort of like what 
that's sort of like the purpose of spirituality. I mean, what is the point if not to sort of orient yourself here in this plane of existence? And um, it's taken me a long, long time to be able to, um, to let all these things wash over me, whether it's like a Baptist minister or the hymns that I used to sing in church or, um, or even or even, you know, a uh, 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 social commentary from people whose views I don't quite jive with, which is something that we're all having to confront. And it, it's, sort of, uh, it's sort of like an endless challenge to not hear things and feel things and just like, like clench up and resist. And I think you, you, like everybody, I think you know what I'm, I hope you know what I'm talking about, you know? Um, where something just hits you the wrong way and it's like that's not how, that's not, that's not how I order the universe, you know, and trying to find a way to stay open through all of that. It, the best example I've got is like um, in Brevard, we've got this great radio station. It's called WSQL because it's white squirrel radio. Brevard is the home of the white squirrel. They're not albino squirrels. They're actually white squirrels, but they're particularly aggressive, and so they've taken over town. Anyway, we have WSQL, and on Sundays, I tune into WSQL, and they've got a local Baptist minister, about local Baptist service going on. And... I'm not of the Baptist faith. I grew up in the Christian church, but that style, that perspective, let's just say a lot of the things that he says, I find myself clenching, right? Like they hit me the wrong way and I feel like he's missing the point. But what, what, what the exercise for me is to like, is to listen to it and to see if I can like remain open, remain open in my mind and in my heart and almost like juice it for, for like, Juice it for, like, the good stuff that's in there, right? Or even, like, I'll just, like, turn his words around. I'll be like, maybe, like, I'd be like, I bet he meant to say it this way, you know? Like, I'll, and, and I feel like that, it's sort of like my own little way of transforming anything into the sacred. And some people would say that that's, like, that's being, like, sort of selective. Like, you can't, you can't, you can't decide what you like out of the Bible, take and leave stuff. And that's one perspective. My perspective is it's just much better to just sort of move through the world and try to juice everything for the sacred. So that to me is kind of like, that's sort of like the, that kind of comes to the essence of like, of like what, what I feel like we're all sort of in a position to have to do right now is to try, whether you call it like look on the bright side or, or remain hopeful or optimistic or just stay open-minded and try not to close yourself off to these other people. I think that you know, I'm, I'm, I'm off on a tangent, but to that end, um, I'm gonna play a, a, what I would call, I guess, I don't know if it's a gospel tune or not, but it's definitely a song about heaven. And it wasn't written by the Carter family because the Carter family, as far as I can tell, they didn't, A.P. Carter never really wrote anything, but he was a master at discovery. And he would wander all over the hills, I believe of, Western Virginia, primarily. Someone could probably correct me on that. East Tennessee. And he would, he would sniff around and he would find, he'd find these people singing these songs on porches and he would find a way to document them. He'd get them in his head, he'd take them back. And he and Maybell and, um, oh, what was her name? Anybody in the studio, studio audience? Right, he and, of course, he and Sarah and Maybell would turn it into magic. So this is one of those tunes where, you know, if you're not, if you don't believe in heaven or you don't, like, believe, which is a whole other thing I could go into, if you don't believe in, in heaven, this sort of tune, it'd be very easy for you to just be like, well, eh, whatever, that's a nice little churchy tune. How out of touch with the true reality, the true nature they really are. But you can also sort of see it for what it is, which is a beautiful song about, about paradise, which I believe can be found on earth, but I'm getting ahead of myself and I can talk all day. So this is a tune called 50 Miles of Elba Room. Hundred miles the 
gates are wide, abundant entrance there. Fifty miles of elbow room on either side to spare. When the gates swing wide on the other side, just beyond the sunset sea, there'll be room to spare as we enter there. Room for you. There the fairest flowers bloom On the right hand, on the left hand Fifty miles of elbow room I get cramped, I get crowded here and I long for elbow room. I long to reach for altitude where the fairest flowers bloom. Won't be long until I pass through that entrance there with 50 miles of elbow room on either side to spare. When the gates swing wide on the other side. Beyond the sunset sea, there'll be room to spare as we enter there. Room for you and room for me. When the gates swing wide on the other side, there the fairest flowers bloom. On the right hand, on the left hand, 50 miles of elbow room. On the right hand, on the left hand, 50 miles of elbow room. Thank you, 50 Miles of Elbow Room. One of those kind of songs. So, uh, and speaking, of, speaking of keeping your heart open, so I had the most interesting thing happen this week. I, some of you know I own this old Ford truck, and I named it D Ford Bailey, and hopefully that's okay. I know that uh, things have changed a lot since I got that vehicle in August of last year. Uh, but D. Ford Bailey was the, f the first African-American on uh, the Grand Ole Opry, and I, and, I, and I understand the first person named by their name on the Grand Ole Opry, and he's been a huge influence on Bill Monroe and a lot of other artists, so I named my truck D. Ford Bailey. D. Ford is kind of um, a little broken down right now. It melted the positive terminal on the battery, so I think something was arcing, and I fixed that, but now I've got some kind of a fuel problem. Such is life when you've got an old Ford. But the best thing about this truck is that it has, it's like the ultimate conversation starter. And all different kinds of people are into funky old cars, you know? So I'll meet like, like I've had like, you know, 20, 20 year old African American guys come hang out with me at the gas pump and then like 80 year old, you know, white, you know, white, white dudes. And, and, and I mean, I, I, I sound like an idiot, but like all kinds of people, you know, are into like old vehicles and you meet some really interesting people. So I was at a trailhead the other day and there was this surreal 1983 Toyota, uh, what was it? It, was, it wasn't a Chinook, it was like a, it was a Sun Raider. I'm so glad you two are here because you are like my extra brain. And it was stunning and, I, and in my, on my Instagram, I took, on D Ford's Instagram, I post, I, my, my truck has an Instagram. I posted this, uh, this video, I did like a 360 of this stunning vehicle, right? So I go on my ride and I take my swim and I come back and the owner is like circling it and then she gets in and she goes to leave and she stops to compliment me on my truck, right? Which is, which is my point, it's like this thing is a total conversation starter. And we get to talking and she's like, well, do you know any places, you know, she's, she's from Georgia, she's like, do you know any places that I could, I could park tonight, you know, because all the campgrounds are full. And I was like, you know, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. There's not a lot of boondocking going on anymore. They've closed all the forest campgrounds, you know. But here's my number. Hit me up when you get out of the forest, and I'll see if I've got something. And so I got to thinking, you know, she could totally park in my garage or in my driveway. So I sent her a text. Sure enough, an hour later, she comes rolling into my driveway. And we ended up hanging out. She helped me, like, do the dishes. The kids were, like, petting her dogs, hanging out inside this beautiful restored camper. It was this really amazing thing. But... The point of the story that I'm getting to is it became, it became clear 
as will happen when you get to talking to people, that there were, that maybe, how do I put this? We probably didn't really see eye to eye politically on some things, right? And then sure enough, after she'd split and left, I went on my Facebook and there was a Facebook request from her. And so I went to her Facebook page and, and sure enough, my suspicions were confirmed, right? Um, but, but what I realized was, I, I sort of took, right in that moment I was like, okay, I'm gonna step back from this and all my judgments about what it means to be this kind of person, all my preconceptions, and I'm just gonna like think about what Shelly has been like, what, how, wh what her vibe has been like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like experience Shelly in the now instead of with all this baggage that I could be applying to her. That, you know, and it's just like, it's just political ideology. This is like one of the sweetest women I've ever met. And you know, it, it sort of like, it was an amazing opportunity to get to spend some time with someone whom I otherwise wouldn't have. And so often these sort of political things, and especially now, because the right thinks the left is so whack, and the left thinks the right is so whack, and they're both kind of half right, and it also doesn't really matter ultimately. Um, it's, it's, it's so easy to just be like, yeah, you're like this, and you're like this, and, and the, I'm gonna roll the garage door down and we're done hanging out. And, there is absolutely no room for transformation there. And so as, um, as much as it can kind of make my skin crawl to give someone the space to, to have their political views, it, without, without offering that little bit of space and meeting like being to being, the conversation is over. And so when we talk about transforming this country into what it ideally can be, which is a United State of America, um, I really think that, that it's, there's, there's a lot of indignation and a lot of judgment that is not misplaced, but it's not very useful. And I, like, I made a friend this week who is a total Trump supporter, and I wonder how many of you can say that, you know? And it was really inspiring for me. So I just wanted to tell my little story about Shelly. She was really cool. I hope, she I hope Shelly's doing well. I hope... I hope she's happy, and I hope, um, yeah, I wish, I, wish, I wish her the best. So, with that said, I would like to introduce my guest, because this is what you came for. <laughs> this man, John Stickley and I have known each other for a long time. John has been playing music since he was very young. His first band that I know of was called Strunk and White. He played drums, it was a punk band, he wore no shirt. The second band he was in was called Crawdad P.A. I can't tell you what the P.A. stood for, but I know that uh, Andy Thorne was in the band, and he would probably tell you what it stood for. He was also in the legendary band The Big Fat Gap, which is a tri-cities, is that what you call it? Raleigh-Durham area, a staple in that part of the country. Big Fat Gap, a ton of great musicians have gone through that band. But most importantly, we were bandmates in a band called Broke Mountain. That's right. That's the applause I was waiting for. Uh, that was a great band. Anders Beck was in that band. Uh, Andy Thorne was in that band. And, a, and an amazing and under, under, underappreciated musician named Robin Davis. We were in that band back in 2004 and 2005 before we all went on our way. He was also in the Biscuit Burners, but now he spends all of his time doing what he should be doing, which is playing his music in an absolutely indescribable and badass trio, the John Stickley Trio. Yeah. <laughs> Drums, fiddle, and guitar. Please make him welcome the one and only Mr. John Stickley. So I'm gonna sit on this stool while I interview you. Is that, is that all right? Yeah, sure. You don't have to sit. But okay. I'm lazy, so here we go. Stick, how you doing, man? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was drinking PBR and it was taking me back to those broke mountain days. <laughs> Sleeping on floors? Yeah. Scoring free beers? Yeah, glad I have a bed now. Yeah, I remember we'd be at festivals and the festival, we'd show up, the festival would just be like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we'd show up on Wednesday night because <laughs> we had nowhere else to be. And Monday morning would roll around, and we'd still be wandering around the fairground trying to get ground scores and trying yep. to em help people empty out their coolers. And, and we had sleeping bags, but no coverings, no tents. <laughs> Who nope. needs it? And no plan. Yeah, there's, a, there's an easy up right over there. That's, I, that's enough. I miss, I miss those days. We met, we met back in the winter of 2014, I think. 
and we met when... Uh, uh, four. Four. Me, that's right, that's right, sorry. God, yeah, 2004. That's a long time. And we met to make the Broke Mountain record. And yes. Then, and then that summer, summer 2004, you came out, you spent the summer with us slumming around, sleeping on floors. Mm -hmm. um, you remember that? I remember it well. It, it was, was one of the best times I've ever had. That was cool, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. I remember meeting you, actually. Uh, it, I think it was our first gig, which was Andy Thorne's graduation party, maybe, in Chapel Hill. 100%. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't awkward at all. Yeah, because you were kind of stealing us away from our Chapel Hill band, the Big Fat Gap. Yeah, that is to say it was they extremely were all awkward. There oh, yeah. It was not cool. Yeah, no. Yeah, we couldn't get out of North Carolina fast enough. <laughs> Robin was like, it looks like the jungle. He had, he had never been out of Colorado. He said, it looks like the jungle. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's a desert cat. And there's yeah. also a great story about Robin. We were driving, you know, we, we, we went straight through the night, Anders and Robin and I and my Ford Explorer, and I was driving, the sun was coming up. We were driving into the mountains before you get to Asheville, which is where the show is taking place right now. And we were like, hey, Robin, Robin, wake up. And you got to understand, Robin Davis lives, he grew up on like, a 500-acre ranch at the base of the San Juan Mountains outside of Pagosa Springs, right? Right up in the most beautiful mountains in the world. We're like, dude, check it out. It's the Appalachian Mountains. And he's like, he looks up and he's like, those aren't mountains. And he goes back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he was wrong. Um, so you're, you've, been, you've been recording it at Organic Records, which is, which is nearby here. Yes. Right? You got to deal with them. You're making music with them. What a, that's a great studio, right? Yeah, really great. Mm -hmm. And you were there with my bandmate, Jeremy Garrett, recently. Yes, I was lucky enough to be in town when he was here making his amazing record. Yeah. And uh, he, they brought me in and said, hey, Jeremy said, do you want to do this song with me? And I was like, sure, of course. Let me get in my booth. He's like, no, we're not doing booths. We're doing room. <laughs> me and you, one mic, one take, no, no solos, no overdubs. And that's how we cut that song that he had written. Awesome. Yeah, it was so much fun. It was this little, uh, you know, I, I like to edit my music personally, but um, <laughs> he, he was cool to just let it go, and we, we had fun. I, I think the track's coming out soon. Yeah, I, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, I heard it. The track is really cool. I, like, I prefer that old school kind of stuff. I don't, I, you know, I, I kind of like to play, and then part of me is like kind of relieved <laughs> when it's over. <laughs> like... Okay, I can't make that any, I can't, I won't screw it up any worse now, you know? Like, totally. All right, yeah, I made it. Yeah. I got through it. We did, uh, we did that whole ladies and gentlemen record as the String Dusters, and I managed to not um, overdub one single bass note on the entire session, which is probably, I probably should have. Um, when, if, if any of you listen back to that record now, it's a little bit like John Paul Jones on the first Zeppelin record, where there's definitely some missed changes, but I'm hoping it sounds like <laughs> I meant it, like JPJ did. Even though I know he didn't. <laughs> you know, like the five chord comes and John Paul is nowhere near it. It's just a fact. So, optimism, man. You seem like a pretty joyful guy. You told me the other day that you're actually not, but I don't buy it. <laughs> I don't buy it. I mean, I've hung out with you a lot. You're a happy guy. How, how are you staying hopeful and optimistic right now? You know, I, I, that's, it's funny because I've had people tell me that uh, over the years that they think, you know, they just hear my music or see me play and they think mild mile wide grin happy joyful but I think it's more about like maybe that's what I'm hoping for and what I'm striving towards it's not always exactly how I feel totally yeah I read I read a quote today and I should have written it down it was something about like you know your joy your joy can bring about a smile but your smile can also bring about joy and it's almost like you almost sort of like reverse re reverse engineer the process that's a cool thing you can lean on is just when in doubt give a big old smile <laughs> and just have fun that's what i do um it's uh, like you charm yourself well you you were talking about the preacher earlier and i remember growing up in church like one of the things i remember is that they told me joy is different from happiness like happiness can come and go you can have bad days you can have good days you can be happy you can be sad but there's a there's an underlying joy that you can have all the time and you can kind of hold on to that and see the joy and you can look at all situations as you know something good to learn from and kind of hold on to that inner joy that you can keep so 
Yeah, I was listening to I was listening to Ram Das podcast on the way up here because that's what I like to do. And and specifically, I, I sought one out that was about joy. And he was talking about that exact same thing where you 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 find a way to sort of enjoy the sort of as as Castaneda put it, you enjoy like the folly of human experience. You 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 you're able to sort of step back from it all enough to at least sort of see the absurdity in all of it. Yeah, and, and I looked this up in the Bible, and it, I actually couldn't find it. It's, it's like one of, one of the many things I was taught in church wasn't in the Bible. I was yep. like, I know it says somewhere that joy is this like underlying sense of joy you can have whether you're happy or sad, but no, it, it wasn't in there at all. <laughs> yeah, there's, a quote, there's another quote that I was thinking about this week, um, and I was going to save it for later, but it's... it's um, Comparison is the thief of joy. And that's one of my favorites. Facebook. And so, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, every episode we got to rag on Facebook a little Facebook bit. Facebook stole my joy again. Yeah. That, that's a song right there. That's like an old country song. <laughs> Facebook stole my joy again. Yeah, I, you know, and, and it, it was. A, just came that quote was attributed to Mark Twain, but when I heard it, someone said it was from the Bible. But that's just kind of one of those things. It's like it's like a universal truth and just a really fun thing to play with. Yeah. Comparison is the thief of joy. It's an important thing for me to remember when I'm playing guitar next to John Stickley. And that is in the Bible. You do not. You do not. You do not want to compare yourself to this man. Fortunately, I am so clearly on a different page than Stickley that I don't have to worry about that. Or if you're better than me, compare yourself, <laughs> and it'll help you. <laughs> Nobody else thinks that's funny. I think that's awesome. <laughs> um, man, I wanted to ask you, uh, what, like, <laughs> meaner? Do you have any, like, I mean, without sounding too new agey, like, is there is there anything you do to sort of cultivate optimism? Are there any practices? Do you do you like? You know, like some people meditate, some people do yoga, some people go to church, some people read books. I mean, is there anything that you do to sort of help keep perspective? I think I know about all of those things, and I, every time I'm upset, I think about doing one of them, and it makes me feel better. <laughs> totally, yeah. totally. Usually I just sit around on my porch and play guitar. That's exactly what I knew you were going to say. The guitar <laughs> is your practice, and you it, can tell. It is, but it brings as much pain and shame as joy <laughs> any day. It, seriously, it can hurt. It's the, just like, wow. The pain. One of the things the about shame. not being able to perform is you don't get this feedback, so... When I'm sitting on my porch, uh, recently I've been obsessing over the thickness of my pick, and I've been buying Dude. different thicknesses of picks, and uh, I think I've found the right answer, and then I'm just proven desperately wrong by nothing. That's, that's sort of like a parable for life. Yeah. You think you found the answer, and then you're proved desperately wrong by nothing. <laughs> the nothingness overwhelms you, and you're like, oh, yeah. None of this is true. Right, exactly. I thought I had it. I noticed that the other day when you came over to my house to pick a little bit. You had probably 20 picks. Oh, yeah. Not just thickness, size, shape, everything. And you'd, and like, then, change in the middle of a song. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's um, a neuroses. But I picked one for this, this gig. Awesome. And I'm sticking with it. It's a Tad 50 by Blue Chip Picks, and it's the one that I've been playing a long time, and I feel more comfortable on it than any of the other ones and it's probably just means stick with what you know stick with what you know john stickley that's <laughs> stick with what you know that should be um yeah that should be like i feel like that's like a bad political campaign slogan it means stick with what you know which is playing tunes Right. Well, I did see I did see on Facebook that someone asked you specifically to stick to the music and stay out of the politics. I know. I mean, golly, I made I made one comment about how Black Lives Matter, and you just get attacked. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, if you're walking on this earth, you're ever almost every act is political. It's all tied together, and so you know, it's it's kind of an unreasonable ask. That someone not be political, I think. Yeah, it just kind of happens, you know. Um, you, you like me, grew up playing music in church. Yes. Right. Yeah, singing, and singing mainly. Yeah. Well, that. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the best part of church, if you ask me. Agreed. I mean, I can, I, I, I could take or leave the rest of it, but singing was always my jam. 
Sometimes when we're dorking around, you and I'll play a tune together. Um, I feel the shadows now upon me, and the angels beckon to me. Before I go, dear sisters and brothers, won't you come and sing for me? Sing those hymns we sang together in that plain little church with the benches all worn. How dear to my heart, how precious the moment we stood shaking hands and singing a song. Hazel Dickens, won't you come and sing for me? I love that tune. It's a really, really great tune. You want to play some? You want to play some music now? Yeah. I mean, we just did. <laughs> so, like, do you want to keep playing music? Oh yeah, but only at social distance. <laughs> okay. Appropriate distance only. You got it. Don't be face? getting all up in my face, man. I won't. I'll keep my distance. Hey, so for those of you tuning in at home, we thank you for tuning into the Travis Book Happy Hour. I'm trying to keep it happy tonight. And uh, we're entirely, uh, the, the, the whole model for this thing is donation-based. We have a, a, a fantastic staff here. Uh, we've got the Great Eagle. They've, they've opened for us. Thank you. They've, they've, they've made all this possible. And so um, you can contribute both through uh, PayPal. I think it's PayPal back, paypal.me backslash the Great Eagle or at my Venmo, Travis Book. All donations will go to covering the overhead all goes to real people doing real work trying to survive the pandemic so feel free to donate at any time we'll do the accounting you can trust us <laughs> Shall we? this song is not joyful but then we'll get back to the good times yeah. <laughs> Gave all that I can give I can't stand another day I don't know if I can live The world's got the best of me Now I'm fighting to get free And it's time for me to drive Yes, it's time for me to Rocky Mountain High, and I've been to the Valley Low, from Virginia down to Texas, my speed never slowed, and my past is in the mirror, don't call cause I won't hear ya, and I'm bound for Mexico, yes I'm bound for Mexico. Get to Mexico, I'm heading straight down to the coast Where the waves meet the shore is where I'll face my ghost And only time will tell, I might end up in a cell But I can't go back again No, I won't go back again
what I did And I won't say just what I've seen But the things that I've been through Can make any man turn mean So to save you all some strife I'm about to take my life And I'll bid this world goodbye Yes, I'll bid this world goodbye Yeah, John Stickley, everybody. That's a song by Andy Thorne and our good friend Johnny Buck, and it's become sort of a staple in just about every repertoire, whether it's a Broke Mountain gig or a String Dusters gig or an Andy Thorne gig. It's a very lonesome tune, but we still love to do it. I'm going to let Stickley... Uh, this is sort of the Stickley segment of the show, and I'm going to give Stickley the floor and let him play solo. and and. Once again, I'm going to meditate on comparison being the thief of joy while Stickley does his thing. <laughs> thanks, Travis, and thanks for having me, man. This is an absolute pleasure. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> well, uh, this is the point where uh, I was supposed to do a long solo, you know, 20 minute solo segment, but I said, you know what? I don't want to do that long solo. I'm going to do one solo thing, and then I'm going to get Travis back up here to play with me, because I like playing with other people. But I am going to do this song. Uh, it's, it's on my first solo album called Lions, and uh, this is a tune I wrote when I was living over in West Asheville on a street called Mildred Avenue. And uh, I saw someone else did this, and they put Elfia after something. And so I decided to call this song Mildred Elphia. It's the first song I ever recorded on GarageBand.
Very cool, my man. That's awesome. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. <laughs> this next food, this next tune's named after a seafood place, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah wholesale, um, wholesale and retail. <laughs> Carolina Beach. Uh, it's a great little place called Blackburn Brothers. They have their own boat. It, the, they go get the seafood on the boat, and then they bring it right to the place, which is right on the coast. And uh, you can walk right in there and get anything you need, fresh out of the water, anything they have that day. And uh, my brother and I went and got some shrimp and some fish. And uh, we were getting ready to cook it up, and we were waiting for the oven to preheat. And that's when we wrote this song. Uh, it's actually when I ripped this song off from my brother, Jeff, who always has the really good ideas. Um, <laughs> but I wrote the B part. He wrote the A part. And uh, we decided to just go ahead and call it Blackburn Brothers. And the, the place knows about the song, and they're, they're really happy about it. Did they give you free seafood, though? No. Your time will come, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Nor should they. Awesome. I almost played that right. You're going to sing another one for us. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you are. All right, I'm going to get in. the lyrics I'm so in. I can try to sing with you. Oh, yeah. We were talking about while I was uh, on, the, on the topic of my brother, Jeff. We uh, have a little band called the Stickley Brothers. 
We've done a couple, couple tours. Uh, we always do a salt life tour down the coast of North and South Carolina. And we like to play my song, Salt Life, but we're gonna <laughs> spare y'all from that tonight. Bummer. <laughs> I, thought about, uh, I thought about trying to find a way that we could uh, insert your music video for the Wayward Sons. Digitally? Digitally. Oh, wow. <laughs> for those of you who want, yes, there you go. For those of you who want a little entertainment after the show, if you go on YouTube and you look up Wayward, and that's W-A-Y-W-R-D, Sons, S-U-N-Z, John Stickley, you will find an amazing music video and rap. I don't know what else to call it. That was made by John Stickley when he was working at Cape Fear Formal Wear many, many <laughs> years ago. Yeah. There's also a lost track called Cape Fear Formal Wear, which I think is one of the best hip hop recordings of all time. And I will try to track that down for you all later in bonus content for the Travis Book Happy Hour. Yep. You've, got, you've got to write songs about working at a tuxedo shop. <laughs> Very few songs written about that. But this is not a song you wrote. No, this is uh, one that, like I said, we do it in the Stickley Brothers, and it's from back in the day. Um, any Meat Puppets fans out there? You know, I think this album came out maybe 94 or 93, but um, their album, Too High to Die, uh, one of the last tracks on there is called Coming Down, and it's almost kind of like a bluegrass song. And it goes like this. Coming down from the mountain, I have seen the high and mighty, I will go again someday, but for now I'm coming down, coming down from the mountain, I have seen the lofty glory, I will go again someday, but for now I'm coming down. I have seen the information on the lighter side of dumbness, I have heard the new statistics and the stomping on the ground. Picking slowly up the rock pile, one thing always seems apparent. If the climb becomes too much, I can always turn around. Waking up from my slumber to misunderstand another. Though they call it terra firma, it dissolves beneath my feet. Digging through a pile of garbage for some worthless piece of paper that's been hidden there for me to give meaning to my day. I have seen the information on the lighter side of dumbness. I have heard the new statistics and the stomping on the ground. Picking slowly up the rock pile, one thing always seems apparent. If the climb becomes too much, I can always turn around. But for now, I'm coming down, coming down from the mountain. I have seen the loft of glory. I will go again someday. But for now, I'm coming down. <laughs> those, <laughs> those, <laughs> those lyrics are really so good. If, if you didn't catch them, go ahead and Google that. Meat puppets coming down. It's really apt, really apt for these times. We're going to take a short break, a commercial break, if you will, and we'll be back in about a minute with more music. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Travis Book Happy Hour. I'm your host, Travis Book, joined by John Stickley of the John Stickley Trio. We're coming to you live from Asheville, North Carolina. The Great Eagle, the historic, the lively Great Eagle. Once again, we are entirely donation-driven, donation-funded, so please feel free. You can go to uh, paypal.me backslash the Great Eagle or my Venmo, Venmo Travis book, and make a donation that'll help us cover our costs, keep this thing going. August 4th, we have, excuse me, August 5th, we've got Lindsay Liu coming to play. That was, that was Lindsay you, Liu, you were listening th right there. It'll be sort of similar to this, but also very, very different. So we hope you tune in for that. Stickley and I are gonna play some more tunes now. First tune we're gonna play is a Benny Galloway tune. Benny Galloway is an amazing songwriter. I know some of you know him. To know him is to love him. Burl is, is the best, and he's been instrumental in getting a lot of bands off the ground, not the least of which the Yonder Mountain String Band, but also the Broke Mountain Bluegrass Band. And I've learned a lot of his songs. We've learned a lot of his songs. So we're going to do a tune of his now called How Far I'd Fall For You. I think I just seen my first miracle. I think I just got blown away. Unbelievers, unbelievable. A dream come true, but who's to say? Like an angel sent from up on high. You looked at me right then, I knew. And a flash of something caught my eye. Yeah, I knew I thought I'd fall for you. Thought in this life I seen everything All the ups, the downs, the in-betweens Oh, the good, the bad, just about anything For thirty years in faded jeans Like an angel sent from up on high You looked at me right then I knew And a flash of something caught my eye No one from heaven yet it just don't happen all the time But now there you are And all that's left of me It's gonna be real hard to find Like an angel sent from up on high You looked at me right then I knew You know a flash of something caught my eye
Yeah, oh. Benny Galloway song, How Far I'd Fall For You, or How Fall I'd Far. Uh, when, it, when we were putting together the set list, this is sort of the collaboration part, um, and, and this tune, this next tune we're going to play, when, when I, it's on my playlist, and whenever I hear it, it makes me so happy, and this is really like the reason that I wanted to talk about joy with Stickley, because I feel like this is just one of the most joyful songs I've ever heard. It's called Palm Tree. Take it away, brother. Palm Tree. I love that tune. That was from your first record. Your first record wasn't really the full trio. It was called the John Stickley Trio, but it was more of a... It was like there was, more, there was no more than three people playing on any track. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you were that, one of them. That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there were basically three bonus tracks, which uh, were Bobby Britt and Andy Thorne, um, along with myself on guitar, mandolin, and bass. And so that was the first John Stickley Trio album. And uh, here we are. Here we are. Where, where are we? That's a very good question. Yeah, I mean, it... You know, jo Jeremy, Jeremy Garrett from our band has a joke he'll say about someone. He's like, he doesn't even know why he gets up in the morning. <laughs> and, <laughs> and frankly, I've had a few of those days during this whole COVID era. I don't want to call it a crisis because I'm not Fox News, but it is definitely... Uh, it's a thing. It's like a Corona vibe or like a Corona time or whatever. And I've had some of those days where I wake up and I'm like, I guess I'm here to just like feed the kids and pay the bills. And that's like, that's it. That's all I got. I heard a good quote the other day. Uh, my friend Bill Rudd and I are, we're actually working on a podcast. Really? And uh, it's going to be a playlist slash podcast, short little thing. And um, we were talking about a Tony Rice quote and, uh, Someone re requested a song from one of his albums, an amazing song. I, I was, would have loved to have heard the song live. But he said, you know what? Some things you just record them and you just put them away and that's done. He's like, they asked the guy about 
hey, this old shipbuilder, they said, hey, what about that boat you built, the Titanic? He said, man, you know, some things you just build her and shoves her in. <laughs> and hope for the best? Yeah. All I did was build her and shoves her in. There was, right when this thing, right when this whole thing started, um, your wife, Julianne, posted something on social media. And I'll, I'll try to quote, I'll try to quote it correctly. I'll get, I think I'll get the gist of it right. It was a picture of you, picture of you standing in front of your refrigerator. And your refrigerator is much like, it's a typical American refrigerator. It is covered in pictures. And you were standing there kind of sad, looking at it. And you're like, hey, I just realized these are all pictures of places, like places that we, do you remember when we used to go places? You were all sad. I thought that was hilarious. It hurt very much the first couple months. It really did. The first couple months hurt uh, because of the lack of places in my life. There's only one place. It's like your home. Yeah. That's all you got. Yeah. At least you live, at least you live somewhere where the climate is nice and you can sit outside in your Hey, yard. we're growing a baby now, which is fun. I've heard that. Bundle of joy. Speaking of joy, <laughs> bundle of joy. <laughs> Stickley's making a baby. The world would be a better place. I just build her and shoves her in. <laughs> That's the joke we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. This, on that note, this is a nonsensical song that I made up. It's not really about anything. But now that we can't really go anywhere, it's taken on a new meaning. It's called The Places I've Been. Ready? One, two, three, two, two, three. Sunset in the cities at dawn. Radio's playing, but I sing along. Ah, the places I've been. I've been to places, places I've been. I'm bound to travel, and you know the deal. I've been leading, it doesn't seem real. Yeah, but I'll always ramble back home to you. I can't imagine what else I would do. Ah, the places I've been. I've been places, places I've been. And if the road runs out, if that will. Barrens of the great western plain Sleep in the shadows of its all mountain range Yeah, but I won't be hanging around here too long Road is calling, singing its song Ah, the places, places I've been Ah, 
I've been to places, places I've been. Ah, places I've been. I've been to places, places I've been. Travis Book, y'all. He's put so much work into this. Y'all give him a hand. Yeah, and thank you, friends, for being here tonight. I appreciate you coming and hanging out. We can, we can do about 25 people on the guest list, so um, if you, you all have first dibs for the next one, August 5th with Lindsay Liu. Those of you listening in the studio audience, hit me up. We might have room for you in here. Whatever we can do to keep the Gray Eagle afloat and keep it going. This is an, this is an absolute institution here in Asheville. And we're so grateful that, we're, that they're here. And I mean, I've heard it said that, that some, some estimates, and you know, I, all, all estimates are just made up, but you know, some people estimate that as many as 90% of venues could close. And that seems a little excessive, but the point is, when we get on the other side of this thing, it's going to be a different, a different environment. So anything that you can do to safely support your local venues and your local music, uh, please, please do so, safely. Wear a mask. Um, <laughs> Stickley, sing us another one. Let's do this one about North Carolina. Yeah. Piedmont Foothills. They're calling that rolling land that I still long to see. Blue Ridge Mountains forming and falling someday, somewhere I want to be. In a car, a truck, or van, headed home where I began. Watching through the window, lakes and streams. Yeah, they're rolling by the way. They ain't got no place to go today. It's the mountains and the valleys I call home. Piedmont foothills, Lord, they're calling That rolling land that I still long to see Blue Ridge Mountains formed and falling Someday, somewhere I want to be by trees that rises high and proud as steeple stand yeah we're heading down those dusty roads the yellow lines and the double rows it's appalachian sun the rain and snow piedmont foothills explore their calling that rolling land that i still long to see blue ridge mountains form and falling someday somewhere i want to be River and the Rapidan, the gentle water and the healthy land. It's the mammoth, the large mouth, full of teeth and gills. Piedmont foothills, Lord, they're calling that rolling land that I still long to see. Blue Ridge Mountains form and falling. Someday, somewhere I want to be. Someday, somewhere I want to be. Someday, somewhere I want to be. Thank you. All right, thank you. That's John Stickley. We're going to take a 30-second break for our sponsors. Stickley, will you play us a little background music? The Travis Book Happy Hour is brought to you by no one in particular because we don't have sponsors yet. However, 
you're an individual or a corporation or anybody with some extra money and you'd like to sponsor the Travis Book Happy Hour, please reach out via Facebook or the internet or just telekinesis. Thank you. All right, thank you, John. That was very nice. And uh, thank you to all of our potential sponsors. Um, <laughs> we've had... We've had a really, I think, we've, I think it's been a good show. I hope so. I mean, <laughs> thanks mostly to this guy over here. How about it, John Stickley? I mean, can you even believe it? Really fun playing music with you. Uh, huge thanks to the Great Eagle and to I Am AVL, which is I Am Asheville. They help make the whole stream thing happen. Big thanks to Great Eagle for hosting us. Um, thank you to everyone who's contributed financially to, not, to tonight's show. You can do it once again. PayPal.me backslash the Great Eagle or my Venmo Travis Book. All of that money goes to covering the expenses here tonight. Um, we will be back again um, August 5th with special guest Lindsay Liu. We also have a few other. Um, we're planning on doing shows every two weeks after that. We're still locking in the guests. Um, one of them just bailed on me tonight before the show. But that's okay because we're going to get someone better. It's going to be awesome. Um, but please plan to tune in again. Um, yes, and thank you all. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you all for tuning in and listening. We got one more tune for you. And Travis Book, everybody. John. So I was trying to decide what to do for the final tune. I wanted to do something that was appropriate, and so I got hip to this tune. Um, uh, this tune, the chorus goes, the chorus is what really hit me. It says, it, it says, well, it's not just me, and it's not just you. This is all around the world. And I was like, oh, cool. That's perfect for the coronavirus, right? But then I, d <laughs> but then I dug into this tune a little bit, and the subtitle for this is The Myth of Fingerprints which is an interesting thing. I got to thinking about it, and I got to digging into these verses, and I think that the myth of fingerprints is sort of another way of talking about the cult of personality, which I think is sort of at the root of everything that is destabilizing this country and orienting us in the wrong direction right now. It is sort of the worship of the individual, the worship of stardom, and the idea that, and, and look, it's part of what has made this country great, all right, the idea that every, everyone has their own right to their own life and their liberty and their pursuit of happiness. But somewhere along the way, we lost sight of the fact that none of that stuff works in a vacuum and we are all independent and we are all one. And so it, I think, I think this, this song points to that. I think the myth of fingerprints is a really interesting way of putting it. So thanks to Paul Simon for writing this tune. It's called All Around the World. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Over the mountain, down in the valley, lives the former talk show host. Everybody knows his name. He said there's no doubt about it. It was the myth of fingerprints. Seen them all, and man, they're all the same. Well, the sun gets weary and the sun goes down ever since the watermelon. And the lights come up on a black pit town. A better thing to do well it's not just me and it's not just you this is all around the world out in the indian ocean somewhere there's a former army post abandoned now just like the world yeah and there's no doubt about it it was the myth of fingerprints that's what that old army post was for 
But the sun gets weary and the sun goes down Ever since the watermelon And the lights come up on the black pit town Somebody say what's a better thing to do Well it's not just me and it's not just you This is all around the world Over the mountain, down in the valley, lives the former talk show host. Far and wide, his name was known. He said there's no doubt about it. It was the myth of fingerprints. That's why we must learn to live alone. Where the sun gets weary and the sun goes down, ever since the watermelon. And the lights come up on a black pit town. Just me and it's not just you this is all around the world this is all around the world <laughs> thank you so much that is a happy song to end it's been a great night tonight thanks for dropping in August 5th special guest Lindsay Lou big hand for John Stickley Travis Book Happy Hour. We'll see you all in a couple of weeks.